why you should consider switching to Zone Combat today on Dungeon Craft. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I am Professor Dungeon Master coming to you from beautiful Dungeon University. And here, do we employ mad scientists? No, that's MIT. Here, we help you run a better game of Dungeons and & Dragons and other RPGs. And I'm Deathbringer. Level up your game by subscribing and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of our videos. Today we're talking about zone combat and zone terrain and why I think there are a lot of advantages to them. And I've gotten a lot of questions on our Dungeon Craft Facebook group and our Patreon page about them, so I thought I'd answer as many as I can today. D&D, of course, descended from miniature wargaming, which uses tape measures to calculate the distance between opponents. It has since given birth to two branches of gaming, grid-based strategy games, your gloom havens, your kingdom death monsters, and RPGs. The grids are used because it's more convenient than using a tape measure, and because there is no GM. You are competing against an AI with parameters created by the designers. You are trying to beat the game. You are trying to win. D&D, by contrast, is a collaborative effort. It's not a competitive one. Sure, strategy is a part of it, but it's not what role-playing games do best, which is create characters and create stories. Grids, in my opinion, which is why I'm wearing the plus one vest of protection, they slow down the game into sort of slow-mo Zack Snyder Matrix bullet time mode. Here is a fundamental rule of game design. Anytime you break a process down into smaller parts, smaller increments, it's going to take longer. There's a bit of a misconception with the original Ultimate Dungeon terrain that I played a gridded game because I used this grid pattern, but that's really only because I wanted to break up the surface into smaller pieces and then draw smaller blocks with it because I think it's more aesthetically pleasing. I never played a gridded game where the miniatures move one, two, three. I always said you get to move your hand length in one round. Today's Ultimate Dungeon terrain is zoned. And I'm not the only one using it. Fate RPG, Index Card RPG, Conan, they all use zones. So does 5e Hardcore Mode. And Chris Perkins, when he game masters, also game masters with zones. I'm going to be taking my language from 5e Hardcore Mode because it's the simplest and most straightforward. There are two zones. There is here and there. Here is melee combat. There is ranged combat. Here, you're fighting toe-to-toe. -to -toe beard to beard, and you can take a few steps and take and attack anyone else who is here. There, you have to attack with a ranged weapon or a spell, and you can attack here, but here cannot attack you back. Why? Because they're busy defending themselves from the flashing blades in this area. To move from there to here takes a round. Same thing with moving here to there. And you can attack, you can only move. Some people have asked, what happens if someone from here goes to attack there? In that case, they become their own version of here. Anything within a hand's distance on either side can interfere. Otherwise, they're too far away. Now, this outside ring represents that you can hear what's going on, but you cannot see it. So imagine that this is the campfire, and the goblins are attacking, and then there are some ranged goblin snipers all around. And anyone who is in this outside ring, they're like, oh, I think I hear some combat somewhere in the woods ahead. And if you're not in the outside ring, if you're not on this board, you have no idea the combat is taking place. You have split the party. Your character is somewhere else. People have asked about spells, too. Any fireball fired from there to here, that is the blast radius. And if the wizard is in the blast radius, they take damage, too. And what happens if there's a dragon here? Well, I would assume that it, their flames would engulf both here and there in any one direction. People have also asked, well, what happens if people flee here to there? And the answer is, well, if they stop, there becomes here. But if they keep going, they just get away. I get a lot of questions about how big is there exactly, and the answer is, it is abstract. It's not to meant to depict things literally. So it can be any length of distance, which is within sight of here. It could be 30 feet of cavern, or it could be 15 feet of swampy jungle terrain. All you need to know is it's within spell range. People in the Facebook group have asked about breaking UDT down into quadrants. With quadrants, with sections, it's similar to breaking things down into individual squares. The more you break things down, the slower the game is going to become. So let's talk about my game, McDeath, which I typically run at Gen Con, but 
not this year. Hopefully I will again in the future. But when I run a game at Gen Con, I don't want to have to take too much terrain. Like, I have literally a castle wall. I have an entire castle. But to bring this around, even though it's styrofoam, it could get broken, it could get lost, I could forget it at the hotel room. Rather than do that, I'm just going to use my ultimate dungeon terrain. The climax takes place in Macdeath's castle. The outer ring represents the castle walls. I describe the characters as climbing up ladders and fighting on the ramparts, throwing the bad guys over the side. Then they move into the inner ring where they encounter the walking dead. And I describe the characters fighting through the courtyard and the castle halls. And at last they reach the center where I've depicted two rooms. The throne room where they can choose to confront Macdeath or the evil chapel where they can take on the witches and Lady Macdeath. I don't say you find yourself in a 30 by 30 antechamber with a tapestry worth 30 gold pieces and a doorway in the southwest wall. We skip all that. The outer circle represents all those mundane rooms abstractly. The important thing is that they're fighting Macbeth on a staircase and they have to interrupt the witches before they sacrifice a baby to the dark gods. Boom! Entire castle siege in the center of your kitchen table. But UDT can also be a tavern a wizard's study, a bedroom, or a mad scientist's laboratory. As a matter of fact, let's go there right now. Victor Frankenstein is performing experiments in a tower on the outskirts of town. The player characters see the window and the door, but the windows have bars and the doors are bolted from the inside. So they decide to have the rogue scale the walls and sneak into the roof and open the door. So she rolls a 15 and does it, makes her way down the staircase into the hall, which is the outer circle. So I place that scenery. The hunchbacked assistant walks by. The rogue hides in the shadows, gets a natural 20, so she waits for him to pass, then sneaks over and sneaks a peek through the archway and sees Dr. Frankenstein and his monstrous creation inside. She decides not to engage. Instead, she removes the bolt and lets the rest of the party inside, and they enter the inner circle. Now, everyone inside that inner circle can attack Victor Frankenstein or the creature, and they're all within striking range of their enemies. Meanwhile, the rogue stays outside and chucks throwing knives. She's using her ranged weapons, the knives, on the creature, but the creature cannot harm her because she's out of the zone. That's when the hunchback attacks from behind. Now the rogue and the hunchback are engaged in melee, and the wizard, wondering why she ever entered this room in the first place, backs out. Now the wizard can attack the hunchback or the creature with her magic missile, because both are within range. Simple to set up, and you can reveal the terrain as you go along allowing the players to see what their characters see when they see it. So here's the thing, I love terrain. I am a Terrainosaurus Rex. I own tons of little houses like this, but they're impractical. Can, can you really practically play in this? No, because you got your player's sausage sized fingers in there. No one can see this from across the table. Great for a miniature war game to put your little sniper in there, but it's less practical for a role playing game. You could craft a building like this. This is from one of my earlier episodes on how to craft a tavern, and this is much more practical. The roof comes off, leaving the play area below. But this footprint, it's not very large. Compare this to Ultimate Tavern Terrain. This gives you so much more space and versatility. This can be an entire mansion. Here in the center is the, is the dead body with Professor Plum and the candlestick. And here are all the, the parlor and the dining room and the conservatory and all the rooms we're not using at this time. You gotta get it out of your head that you need to depict everything. Often, less is more. Imagine you're going to see a stage show. You go to see Hamilton. On stage, you're going to see an entire authentic reproduction of the entire Revolutionary War era city of New York. No, you're going to see people dressed as Hamilton, Jefferson, and Washington, and they're going to be dancing and rapping as they did back in the day. And when they want to make a tavern, they wheel on a table. And when it's Hamilton's bedroom, they wheel on a bed. But the basic set is versatile. It's going to stay the same, and that's okay because the audience can suspend disbelief. Look at the Hamilton set from above how much it looks like UDT. Oftentimes, my colleagues and I will use film analogies when discussing Dungeons and Dragons, but Dungeons and Dragons actually has a lot more common, I would argue, with live theater than it does cinema. Like theater, Dungeons and Dragons requires a greater level of suspension of disbelief than a movie does. Look, this is a toy dragon. No matter how big and impressive your terrain spread on the table is, this is a still a toy dragon, and we all know that. In live theater, the main characters are always center stage. It's the minor characters who are on the periphery. UDT does the same thing, 
putting the characters in the middle of the action and everything is built up around them. Now, if pure theater of the mind works for your group and you enjoy it, then great, there's no reason to change. The problem with theater of the mind is arguments can break out over positioning. Who can see around the corner? Who has cover? Can you or can you not attack the monster from behind? Miniatures eliminate that problem, but then you get a new problem, which is it could be expensive. You're putting tons of terrain out. It's a lot to set up, a lot to put away. Then you have to have a place to store it. UDT is the hybrid model. It offers the best of both worlds. It's enough detail so that your players say, wow, that looks really cool but it's not too much detail that it slows the game down. You can also take advantage of the 3D revolution, which is making terrain way easier and cheaper than if you'd made it yourself, like this fireplace or this tiny door. More and more companies like WizKids and Terrain Crate are offering packages where you could buy tons of furniture for comparatively very little money, and then you just have to paint it up with craft paint. Put this on a Lazy Susan, and you have terrain that can be seen 360 Anyone sitting around the table can get to it easier and move their miniature. Add a few well-chosen pieces of terrain and you have a compact zone tabletop that can be anything and go anywhere. Now, if you want to know how to make my ultimate dungeon terrain, I will include links below and you don't have to be a master crafter or have a ton of crafting supplies to be able to do it. Also below, you'll find links to our Facebook group and our Patreon page where I just put up the game Eldritch. Rules Light Horror RPG, and you can get that for just $2 a month. That's a bargain. Once again, this is Professor Dungeon Master for Dungeon Craft. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks to all the patrons who've made this channel and our 40,000 subscribers possible. I'll see you soon, and until then, may all your saves be 20s. Get Bringer again. Click on more Dungeon Craft videos. Soon, Joe Rogan will be gone, and you'll have nothing else to do.